All right, hello again. Um, all right, I figured I'd just jump in and uh, make the next one for uh, the next video for explaining how the, my put number works. Um, so if you remember from the last video, I added the G flag whenever I compiled um, my uh, put number program. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick, actually. So for in test put number dot, it's really simple. It's just the uh, uh, the basically a main, and then we have a uh, a function, right? FT put number FD, uh, and this is the FD. So if you were making put number, for example, and you didn't want to have FD um, in the put number uh, source file, which let's open that up. I think it's in libft sources uh, ft put number. Yep, if you look in here, we see that uh, we have ft, and ft is only referenced twice. In this write function, we have ft, and in this write function, we have ft. So, for example, if you knew you wanted to write it to 1, which is the standard output, you don't even need this ft. If you wanted to make your own put number, you could just get rid of that like this. For example, I'm not going to save this since this is in my actual library, but let's say we wanted to like uh, make just put number. Now we just replace all these FTs with 1. And that's just going to put out to the terminal. So I'm actually going to get out of there without saving. Um, maybe I'll make a tutorial on Vim later. Uh, Vim is super useful. Um, it has a lot of cool things, but it can be very challenging for, for first time users. Um, anyway, so our test put number source file, whoops, let's undo that, um, just has a reference to our function that we just looked at. And it's just passing something in here. Um, so this one, two, three, four, five. Um, I'm going to actually make this a negative so that we can look, we'll look at it in GDB. Um, and we will uh, uh, kind of see exactly what is happening as we go through GDB. If you don't know what GDB is, um, GDB is a debugger. It's the GNU debugger, I believe. Um, and uh, what it does is it lets us um, walk through our programs step by step. Uh, it's very, very powerful, but not at all user friendly for beginners at all. For people who have been using it for a long time, or people who use it in school, such as myself, uh, it's not that hard to use. Um, but for beginners, it's like, what in the world is this? Um, but this could be like, in the PC scene, for example, if if I have someone from a PC scene watching this, um, at Ecole 42, like if you're, uh, basically, the PC scene is like a tryout for the school. If you're in the PC scene, uh, you're going to have these exams. These exams, you can't use the internet, so um, having a uh, debugger that you can use from a terminal that you don't have to use, you don't have to connect to the internet, can be huge if you want to do well in the exams. Um, so I'll show you some basic uh, commands and how to use it. So we added a negative to our put number program. I'm going to run cat and then uh, just cat the, the file. You can see we changed it uh, to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's actually recompile. So we're going to do gcc uh, test put number dot c. Um, we are going to link. You don't have to do this if you're just making your if your main and your function are in the same file. You don't have to link, but because I have an archive, um, uh, which an archive is like a dot a, a file, um, which you get whenever you run the ar command. This is more advanced stuff. Um, uh, that's all like stuff that uh, you don't have to worry about right now, but. Um, right now I need a link, so I'm going to indicate which file contains my uh, my library. Then I'm going to link it with the L. I'm going to put an FT because my library is called libft.a. Um, I'm going to indicate that I want to be able to debug it, so I'm going to add the G flag. And then I'm going to indicate its output name, which is going to be test put number. Output name, you just do a dash O and then name your output. There we go, we compiled. Now we got this. Now, to run it through GDB, we're just going to do GDB uh, and then test put number. All right, so right off the bat, you're going to get this no source available. You have to hit start, um, and that is going to let us uh, jump into GDB. I'm just going to put in some like 
commands as we kind of walk through it. Um, oh yeah, I have a custom, I just forgot. Um, I have a custom GDB file, uh, init file, which allows you to um, customize like the beginning commands on how to set things up. So let's actually show you that right now. If we go to, I'm going to vim, I believe it's, this little squiggly means uh, my home. So I'm going to go home, and then uh, I think it's .gdb init. Yep, so let's vim in there. These are my setup commands. So tui enable means uh, the tui is, uh, I don't know what t stands for, but other than that it's just the ui, the user interface. So we're going to en enable user interface. We're going to set logging enable to on. This is going to make it so that anytime we put in a command, it's going to uh, save it to a text file that we can look at later. So we can relook at what commands we put in and what outputs we got and stuff. Trace commands on, also for logging, I believe. Define hook next refresh. So what that does is if you're in GDB, um, the, uh, the terminal will only refresh every space on it. Um, if it gets changed. So that means that if you change something, if you press next or whatever you do, it's going to change something in the code and it's it's only going to change those specific pixels, I suppose. So other things, like if it moves or if anything changes, it like looks really wonky after a little bit and you have to press control L to refresh your terminal screen. So what this does is every time I, it's a, we're hooking to the next command and where every time we call next, we also refresh. So it's just a way to uh, basically refresh the screen every single time we're hitting next. And it makes it a lot easier to, to navigate. I believe that's it. So let's get out of there. Uh, let's do GDB and then our test. Okay, we're going to start again. And then uh, you can either type in next or you can just type in N. N also means next. Oh, and it tells you I'm not running. So you have to hit run. So we'll run. Uh, I didn't hit a breakpoint, so it's just executed and that was it. Uh, so let's do break and then FT put number. There we go. Now if I hit run. Uh, oh, you know what? I need to... This is, this is what programming is like. A lot of times you have to redo stuff. Um, so I need to make, remake my file. My, uh, um, my library because my library was originally compiled without the G flag and I just added it. So um, I'll show you what the make file kind of looks like over there. This is again probably too advanced, um, but you can look at it anyway. Um, so it is in libft make file. And if we go to C flags, this variable uh, tells me which flags to enter. In equal carondo, we have to have um, wall, extra, and wearer which is w all w extra w air those are warnings and so basically it says uh, whenever you're if you're going to try to compile anything instead of issuing a, a warning fail it fail the compile so that that way the school is very very strict and they can make sure that we're not act the compiler isn't doing anything for the student basically so you add those three you also add g uh, g is going to make it so that uh, it keeps labels so you can step into your functions, for example. So now we need to make, if we do make uh, C, C changes the path of where you're making. And I'm gonna say libft, uh, nothing. So let's do make re. All right, and now if we try GDB here, I'm gonna start, we're gonna break FT put number, and then we're gonna run. Uh, why didn't it work? No source available. I don't know why that happened. Da, da, da. Oh, because I need to recompile. All right, so you can see I recompiled my. Uh, it's like this. This is just how coding is. You know, you always run into problems, and you have to kind of think through step by step how this happens. So, um, I recompiled my. I used. I remade. Right. I did make re to recreate all of my uh, library files, but I did not recompile my test file. It's recompile everything. So if I press up on the keyboard, I can 
go back to this. Uh, this is where I had the, uh, the G flag. So I'm going to recompile this. And now if I go into GV and I hit start, um, and then we're going to break at FT put number. And now if we run, there we go. Now we're in our function. So this is, like I said, this is a recursive function. So we're going to be calling um, ourselves several times. Um, so for example, let's press N. And we'll start stepping through. You'll see if our number is less than zero, what is our number? It's negative one, two, three, four, five. You can say print and then a variable, and it'll print out uh, your the value for that variable. So let's see. Oh, it's less than zero because it's negative. So we're going to print a negative to the terminal. Now you'll see that it's right here is where the negative printed. It's a really GDB can be a little wonky sometimes. It printed it here. So it, whenever the terminal refreshes, this is going to leave. So you kind of just have to keep in mind what there is. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just how it is. There's a way to make it a lot more pretty, which I can show in another video, but I don't want this one to get any more than probably 20 minutes. So uh, I'm just going to hit to the next one. Um, so if number divided by 10 is uh, not 0, so let's see what NBL was. NBL was negative one, two, three, four, five. Um, if we're less than zero, we're going to do this. We're going to say FT put number uh, NBL, which is our number long. So it says a long instead of an integer, divided by 10 times negative one to and our, our file descriptor. We're going to pass both of those back into this functions and we're going to recall it. So before I step into this, let's look at N and NBL, same thing. Um, now if we step into, you can press S, you can type step or S for short. And that's going to let us jump into the function. So you go in like that. Um, now we're in, we're like two layers deep now. So let's print N. Whoops. N is now 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's because we divided it by 10, which means if we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we're basically just dividing by 10 on a decimal is like chopping off the last digit. Now we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We also multiply by negative 1 to turn that negative into a positive. Um, that's it. Now if we keep stepping through, uh, you'll see we don't write another negative, which is good. We are not going to do that because we're greater than 1 now, because we multiply by negative 1. And we're going to jump into this function. We're going to the same function again, but this time just divided by 10. So let's press S to step into it. Let's press print n, and we see we have 1, 2, 3. Just, as, just the same as before. Let's step into this one. I'll print n. Now I have 1, 2. Let's do this one more time. Step, print n, it's 1. And now 1 divided by 10 is equal to 0 now. We still have a 1, but because we are uh, integers don't maintain the decimal points. They don't. Uh, they don't hold those. It just drops off into nothing, so it becomes zero. So now we have. Uh, we are. Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five. We are. I. I believe we are five functions deep, now into this. So we've called ourselves five times. The way that it works in C, is we have our main. Our main called. Uh, ft put number ft, which called ft put number ft, which called ft put number ft, right? You see, five times. So now we're going to continue with this one, and then eventually we're going to return uh, to the one that had one, two, and then we're going to return to one, two, three, and then return to it. So we add to the stack, and then we are going to take off the stack. That makes sense. So let's just see how that works. Like I said, print, uh, well, n, you can see there is one. Um, I'm going to press next. So if n or NBL is less than zero, which means negative numbers, we're going to do this special thing where we multiply by negative one. Uh, but we don't have that, so we're just going to um, take, we're going to set C equal to our number. Let's see what our number is here NBL. It's one. We're going to mod 10. Mod 10 is going to, means we're going to divide by 10, but instead of getting rid of that, that remainder, 
we're actually going to use only that remainder. So dividing is like uh, you divide by 10 normally, but you throw away the remainder. Um, mod or modulus is whenever you divide by 10, but you throw away the rest of the number. You just keep the remainder. That's really that's just what that is. Then we're going to add to it uh, the character 0. Character 0, I believe, is like 43 in ASCII. And so we're basically going to take this number and add 43, and that's going to be saved as a character. So that whenever it's printed to, this, to the uh, terminal, um, it will be as a character instead of like some weird some weird character. It's basically translated into ASCII text. Okay, so we do that. Now we're going to call the write function. And you can see right there, uh, right here, we have the one. I hope that's, I hope it's tracking my mouse. Uh, my screen capture is tracking my mouse. Because there's a one here um, where it says multi-thread thread, thread uh, some address in FT put number, the M has been replaced with a one, and that this area of the screen for some reason is what GDB thinks the terminal is, so it writes to this specific location. But now we're going to return after we've written. So we return, and what we're going to see is we're we're moved our way up the stack. We're now going to move our way down the stack. So in the previous, whenever we had one two, we should have one two here see n is equal to 1, 2. Before we called uh, ft put number fd, and now we are uh, continuing outside of this if. So that function that called this before, that has finished executing. So now we're going back to, um, back to this call, and we're going to do this part, this little if statement. Uh, 1, 2 is greater than 0. So we're going to press next. And we're going to add, we're going to take the modulus of 12, or the 12 mod uh, 10, which means we divide by 10, but we throw away the uh, the front part, right? So we only keep the remainder. So 12 divided by 10, the remainder is 2, so we're only going to keep the 2. And we're going to add this uh, 0 character to it, which, like I said, is 43, I believe. And so that's going to make it 45, and then we're going to write that 45 to the terminal, which should be a 2. So a 2 character. And there you go. And it says 2 next to 2 ulti thre thread, or whatever. Let's do this again. This should be a 3. In the exact same way, we're going to write. There's a 3. And then there's a 4. Here's our 5. Now we're returning from our five. That goes back to our main function, and then we return zero to the to the operating system. That's it. Let me exit out. I'm just gonna look really quick. If you ever don't remember an ASCII value, just man ASCII. Uh, that tells you. Oh, it was the decimal. All right, the decimal for zero is forty-eight. So if you take 48, remember how we, we give it like uh, modulus, or 12 mod 10, if you think back, 12 mod 10 is 2, so we're going to take 2, add 48 to it, which is the character, what, what the 0 character is equal to, 48 plus 2 is 50, 50 is the 2 character. So you see like this, you can pick which character you want by adding, adding the character 0 to it. So that's kind of nifty. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. If you want to run it again, just like that, that's what you get. Well, I hope this was helpful. This was kind of a long-winded explanation. I'm sorry it took a little while, but um, uh, yep, GDB is a wonderful tool, especially in the the PC. Scene. Um, I r highly recommend looking looking stuff up because it helps you run through code like this and you can use it on the exam. So, uh, thanks for watching, appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, ask questions if you have any questions. Ask everyone around you. Um, it's very important. All right, bye.